Hi, what's poppin'? It's your boy Big Rich, Queens, New York City, where we get busy. Back for some Thursday evening business. Ladies and gentlemen, come on in. Wipe your feet on the rug, throw some smoke in the atmosphere. I can't lie, I'm still nursing this NYC diesel. It's amazing. It's, it's, it's sunshine for the soul. That's it. Business time. Let's get right into it. Salute to LTC Nutrition and Performance. My main man, Luigi Mealy. Check him out. Hit his website up. Hit him on Instagram. Email him. Health is wealth. He's going to show you how to get it done. Luigi Mealy. Salute to you, sir. Let's get right into it. This next story coming out of CoastalNostraNews.com by my man, Ed Scarpo. We mentioned Luis Mana's name in yesterday's video. Let's do a story about him today. Attorney for reputed Genovese family conciliary implies, quote, unquote, woke judges selectively grant compassionate release. Louis Bobby Manor, the 91-year-old reputed one-time Genovese family conciliary, is slowly dying in a Minnesota medical prison, according to an emergency compassionate release motion filed by his attorney. Manor, who will be 92 in weeks, suffers from various health ailments including colitis, a hernia, high blood pressure, vertigo, and ulcers, his lawyers allege, which prevent him from walking on his own for more than a couple of steps. He has been in prison for more than 30 years following his conviction for mafia crimes, including murders and ordering a hit on Gambino boss John Gotti. This is not the first request. Mana, who was allegedly under Vincent de Cingigante, tried to get a compassionate release last year, but was denied. Jeremy Landolo, Mana's attorney, argued for the aging wise guy in a hearing Thursday before Peter G. Sheridan, the senior district judge of the U.S. District Court for the District of New Jersey. He noted that Mana wants only to have the rest of his time to spend with his children, grandchildren, and any family that is still alive, Landolo said. Mana has been locked up for 33 years and has paid his debt to society. I agree. I mean, if you can live to be 100, and most people don't, 33 is one third of your life. Assistant U.S. Attorney Alexander Ronnie told the judge not to budge from his previous decision, denying Mana compassionate release. Judge Sheridan said he'd have the answer for the motion within two weeks. Mana, who allegedly ran the Genovese family's New Jersey-based operations, was sentenced to an 80-year prison term in 1989 following his conviction that same year in New Jersey federal court. Mana, who owned Casella's restaurant, a Genovese hangout, was charged for his involvement in plotting to murder John Gotti and brother Gene Gotti and for ordering two other murders, the January 1977 murder of Frank Bok Chung Chin, an electronics expert who agreed to testify for the government, and the 1987 execution of Erwin the Fat Man Schiff, a 350-pound mobbed-up businessman who was slain while dining with a lady friend at the Upper East Side restaurant Bravo Sergio. Mana's previous compassionate release filing was also was opposed by prosecutors, with whom Judge Sheridan eventually agreed. The U.S. Attorney's Office has argued that Mana was exaggerating his health issues and was generally independent with his activities of daily living. Quote, Mana was a leader in the Genovese family, a street boss who accomplished La Cosa Nostra goals through violence and intimidation. Judge Sheridan wrote in his denial to Mana's previous request, despite the fact that he is considered frail and has some medical issues, the nature of his life as a career criminal and his leadership in the Genovese family outweighs his age and medical issues. I don't agree with that. That's not law. That's your opinion. That's your own bias. Prosecutors previously conceded that while Mana does not pose a threat to society, he should remain incarcerated to deter others from following him into a life in organized crime. Mana should serve the sentence he was given, which was to spend the remainder of his natural life in prison, prosecutors wrote last year. Federal authorities have described Mana as a dangerous and evil as dangerous and evil, and touted his conviction as a tremendous blow to organized crime in New Jersey. Prompting the emergency motion, Landolo told NewJersey.com in an interview after the hearing was Mana's deteriorating health condition, along with the fact that other prisoners serving similar sentences for equally horrible crimes have been freed by federal judges via compassionate release. He asks, quote, why are only Italian Americans getting denied, Landolo asked. Then he noted the recent compassionate releases of two other prisoners 
who were freed despite also being given decade-long sentences for committing violent organized crime-linked crimes. Eddie David Cox, 86, who authorities said helped establish and was the brains behind Kansas City's Black Mafia Crime Syndicate, was released over the summer via Compassion and Release. He is a white man. When released, he had served 32 years of his life sentence on drug and other offenses. William Underwood, 67, the leader of 1970s Harlem heroin trafficking gang The Vigilantes, also was serving around 30 years in prison when he was released this past January via a compassionate release motion. He was given a life sentence in 1990. So yeah, I agree with the lawyer here. He's citing two examples of non-Italian criminals that were linked to organized crime that were given compassionate releases. I see where this lawyer is going. So I hope this new judge takes this motion and goes, you know what, 33 years behind bars, he's 91, he's, his health is failing, maybe he lets him go home. Salute to Luigi Mealy for sponsoring this story. As always, LTC Nutrition and Performance. Check it out. DM or email to join and check out his website. And also, of course, thank you to Ed Scarpo for the story, Mob Story Season 3, Big Rich Queens. You know how we do. Let me know what you're smoking on and let me know what city you're smoking in. We will talk soon. Salute.